Hi again and welcome back. It's Ryan Miller here with Aetna Interactive. We're going to talk today about email. Now, I know we've talked about this in the past, but a lot has changed in the last year. If you were paying attention in 2021, you might have remembered that the iPhone and a number of other popular mobile devices increased privacy, specifically in their email applications, making it harder than ever for, well, for email marketers to track performance. So we've got updated performance benchmarks, whether you're a practice leader who's looking to have better oversight and management for their email marketing, or a marketer inside the practice or an independent agency marketer working in the email arena, this is a great chance for you to brush up on how you can do email better. Now, let's take a moment to address the elephant in the room, which is, you know, email, is it really as sexy as it used to be? And the answer is yes, it consistently outperforms for most uh, elective medical practices today, either social media uh, direct posting, social media advertising, and even SMS advertising. So it's an important thing for you to focus some time and energy on for your practice. And really this question is, what can you do better? So the way this particular video, we're gonna to be together for just about eight more minutes. The way that it's structured is we're gonna hit some benchmarks. You can go and check yourself. And then based on your findings, if you're underperforming against the benchmarks, we're gonna give you a checklist of things that you can take a look at to improve your performance this year. So let's talk first um, about how in the self assessment we approach one of the most important ideas, which is list growth. So there are two important benchmarks here that we can look at in terms of measuring the rate at which you are adding new subscribers to your list. Generally speaking, what we want to see is that you're going to subscribe about one new subscriber for every 100 site visitors, and in addition to that, one new subscriber for every 10 patient encounters. Now, does this mean that only one in 10 patients is actually interested in being on your list? And the answer is no. Many of the people that you treat are past patients who are likely to already be on that list. Similarly, a lot of the people who are visiting your sites are simply there for transactions like finding your address or phone number, likely to be on the list and not likely to subscribe in that visit. So you can take a look at the number of new subscribers that you've added over the last 30 days, look at your number of patient encounters, look at the number of site visits, and know pretty quickly how you're doing against that metric. Now, what if you're underperforming? What do you do? Well, first things you want to take a, do, take a moment to look at is your online forms. Every one of your online forms should offer that checkbox allowing the individual to opt in to subscribe to your list. It should in, uh, be automatically linked directly to your email marketing software, whether that's practice management or customer relationship management software that you use, or something like uh, Constant Contact or MailChimp. Those forms, in addition to directly alerting to you to the patient inquiry, should populate that subscriber's opt-in onto your list. It's automatic growth. Um, in addition to that, all of your in-office paperwork you need to get permission from patients in order to market to them. It's uh, uh, not a very good practice here in the United States. It's actually against the law in Canada to directly take an email address that you collect during the course of patient care and use that email address to put that person onto an unsolicited marketing communication list. We don't want to do that. We want patients to opt in. So check your paperwork. Make sure you've got the permission there from the patient. And then most importantly, look at your office processes. Are you taking the names that you collect in office and actually getting them onto your list? This is the number one thing that we see clinics overlook. Now, let's talk about clarity and consistency in your email marketing. So the first thing you have to take a look at is frequency. What we find is for a lot of clinics, especially those that are doing their own email, they do it only when they well, can find a pressing need to send out an email communication. The challenge with this particular choice is that when patients aren't expecting, when they're not trained, to um, uh, look forward to having your email in their inbox, it's easy for them to overlook your sporadic communications. On the other side, if you're too consistent, if you're sending emails too frequently, you burn your list out and people opt out simply to get you to stop contacting them. So ideal frequencies here, what we're looking for is consistency at the rate of about once per month at a minimum, and not more than three times per month for most types of elective medical clinics and spots. Now, Mobile responsiveness is probably the most important thing to note for you. What we find today that for many clinics, the rate at which people are looking at your emails on mobile devices is roughly equal to or greater than the number that are seeing your emails on desktop. But many clinics who are doing their own email marketing are only looking at their distributions on desktop and are often surprised to find how difficult it is to read or interpret their emails when they're viewed on the phone. So be sure that you or the team that you supervise are checking each email on their mobile device before it gets sent to the full list. 
So what do we do really quickly? Well, we want to make sure that we've got visual consistencies in the logo presence, in the design of each one of your emails. That's going to help me recognize it, right? We want to make sure that all of the content that we deliver is uh, legible on a mobile device without having to pinch and pan. Right? I should be able to read the words of your message the moment I open it up on my mobile phone. In addition to that, I want to check my distribution frequency. And you can simply look at that by looking at your delivery reports. Look at the timing, right? Are you going out on roughly the same day of the week, same uh, time of the month every month if you're on a monthly cadence? And check that out just to make sure that you have the discipline to ensure maximum deliverability. Now, the third area that we want to benchmark ourselves is really just the overall email marketing performance. As I mentioned at the beginning, in 2021, it got a little harder for us because some of the data about things like open rate has been obscured for certain users who have enhanced privacy features on their mobile phones. So what we're looking for in 2022 is that your open rates are exceeding 25%. We fairly routinely see open rates that are closer to 40%, but this is the industry average in the healthcare and beauty space. In addition to that, we want to look at click-through rates. A really good click-through rate on average is about 3% of all of the people who were uh, sent the distribution overall. So um, those metrics should be directly in front of you in whatever software that you're using. A very easy thing for you as a practice leader or a marketing manager to check in on to make sure you hit these benchmarks. But what if you're underperforming? Well, here are a couple things that you can check. Number one, we already talked about the idea of frequency. If your frequency is inconsistent, you're going to tend to underperform on both open rate and click through. Make sure that your brand is immediately recognizable. We talked about that under consistency. We want people to know that this message is your message, that they value your content in that relationship, so they're likely to open it and click when they receive it. Delivery time is actually an important thing as well, and it's something that varies from industry to industry and region to region, so you might need to do a little bit of testing here. What we generally find is that uh, midweek, we see great uh, open and performance rates in that Tuesday through Thursday range, and that kind of before and after the lunch hour, the middle of the day, both tend to perform very well in our space, but there are certainly outlying examples. So take a look at your own data in terms of when your sends are driving the most opens and click-throughs and target your future distributions into that space. So uh, subject lines, we have to admit, is probably one of the biggest things that influences your email open rate. Take a chance to go back and study some of your subject lines. Look at which types of subject lines performed the best and allow that to influence your writing as you go into the future. Now, interestingly enough, what we find for clinics that do their own email, this is the number one problem that we see in this particular area of benchmarking, is that very often emails are constructed without any clear call to action or next link that would take the user deeper into their relationship with your, your clinic. So um, if you're constructing an email, the thing you have to stop and ask yourself is, what do I want the user to do next? And which link on my site is most appropriate? In some cases, maybe it's simply a link to your contact page or your request a consultation page. But very often, if you're talking about a procedure, the most obvious link to include is a link to that procedure's page on your website. That's going to allow that user to take their interest, which you've hopefully piqued, go deeper into that, spend more time with you and your brand, and ideally convert to a patient. So think about how is email marketing performing for your clinic now, and how are you gonna make it better for 2022? Thanks for paying attention. If you have any questions at all, hit us up on our website or post a comment on our blog.